Welcome along to the final video in our series where we're learning how to code an endless runner game using Python code. Uh, if you have a look at what we've got created so far, we've got a pretty good looking game. Our zombie is able to jump in the air to collect ghosts for 5 points and also jump over the spikes to earn 1 point. There is an issue though, if we collide with the spikes, nothing happens, so we need to work on that first up today. Uh, some other things we will be adding in this tutorial include a bit of background music, uh, just to engage the player in our game a little bit more and also want to put in a game over screen that when we hit the spikes we'll have a screen pop up saying game over and what our final score was once we've done those few things our game should be finished so let's get stuck into it if you um, jump to the top of your code and scroll down a little bit we're looking for a section now called create game variables at the moment we've only created the score variable uh, if you go in just below that we're going to create one more variable called game over there needs to be an underscore between those two words. And we are going to set that game over variable to false. Okay, false has a capital F, just be aware of that. And that is just basically saying when we run our game, that variable game over is set to false. It means our game's not finished yet. Later on in the game, when we hit the spikes with our zombie, then that variable game over needs to change to true, which means our game has finished. And it's going to trigger some other events to occur. Okay, so we've just created that variable called game over first of all. Now we're going to update that inside of this function here, the update function. Um, so what we need to do is change this variable from a local variable to a global variable, which means we can update it in both our function here and also outside of the function if we want. So let's put in a comma after those few other global variables and just add in game over. So game over now becomes a global variable. Next thing we'll do is scroll down to the section where we are talking about the spikes. Okay, have got a little bit of code to add in here to um, make the collision event work properly. Okay, so we are going to put in a comment first of all that just says collision event between the zombie and the spikes. Okay, so first up we'll do a little if statement uh, to check whether the zombie has collided with the spikes. So we're going to write if zombie dot collide, and now usually we'd write collide rec to see if our zombie has collided with a particular item or actor on the stay, uh, in the game. But we're not going to do that this time. We're going to change it to collide list. Okay. Remember back to, well, I can't remember, it was the third or fourth video, we added some spikes into the game. We put those spikes inside of a list called obstacles. Okay, so we're going to be checking now if we've collided with anything inside of that obstacles list. Okay, so it says if the zombie.collide list obstacles, so if we've collided with any of the spikes inside the obstacles list, and then we're going to put in the not equal to symbol, which is an exclamation mark and an equal sign, and then we're going to put in minus one. Now that's a little bit confusing. We put a colon after that minus one as well. I'm going to put a comment in here to try and explain this, what's happening here a little bit. So the collide list function there is going to return minus one if there's been no collision. Okay, so if we have not collided uh, with the spikes, then this minus one value will be returned into the collide list um, function here. But if we do collide with the zombie, okay, that's when we don't get minus one. Okay, I'm not sure what actually gets returned, but something else will get returned. So if we don't get a return of minus one, that means we've had a collision. So what do we want our game to do when we have that collision? First of all, let's change that game over variable that we just created before to true with a capital T. Okay, so that's going to trigger some more events a little bit later on, but that will tell our computer that the game is now over. Next thing I want to do is get rid of the spikes that are currently appearing on the screen. So the ones that hit us and any others that are coming up. So we're going to write in the obstacles list name and then remove. And from that obstacles list, we're going to remove the spikes. Okay, and all that is doing is just deleting the spikes that are currently on the page. Okay, so any spikes that are currently on the game screen will be deleted. Remember, in the obstacles list, it only contains the spikes 
um, that are currently on the screen. So that's why it is only deleting the spikes that are currently on the screen. Um, the other thing we'll do is just play a little sound to signal to the player that the game is over. If you have a look in your sounds folder, you've got a sound called game over. It's all one word, so let's put that in. Uh, we'll just need to write sounds.gameover.play and then put some brackets at the end there. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's just test that quickly to see what happens when we hit the spikes. Okay, so the spikes on the screen disappeared. The sound is playing nicely. Okay, so that collision event is starting to sh um, take shape. Uh, what we'll do now is go down and get this game over screen working at the bottom of the page. So I'm just going to delete that empty space. We're going to go into the draw section here. And at the moment, we just automatically draw everything onto the page. Okay, so everything just appears and will always appear on the screen. But we don't want that to happen. We only want this stuff to be drawn if the game over is equal to false. That means we're still playing our game. If game over equals true, it means we've finished our game. So we want to basically hide this stuff and just put up a game over screen. So this is what we need to do. We need to um, I might put a comment in first of all. So if the game is over, display a message with the final score. Okay, so let's do an if statement. If game over. You could probably write if game over equals equals true and do it the same way, but all we need to write here is if the game is over. It knows that we're looking for the variable game over being set to true. So if our game is over, we're going to write game over on the screen. So we're going to write screen.draw.text. In brackets and quotation marks, we're going to write the words a game over and close those quotation marks. We'll put a comma. I'm going to use a new um, function, I guess you could say here, called center x, spelled the American way. So on the x axis, we're going to set our value to 380. And then we're going to use center y. And we're going to set that to, say, 150. <coughs> The color we're going to use is uh, red. We defined that earlier in our tutorial. Remember at the top of the page here, we defined our colors. Okay, that's where the red's coming from. Um, after we get the color red in, we just need to pick the font name. So the font name will be equal to Creepster. That was that font we downloaded um, at the start of this series. So if you look in your fonts folder, there's Creepster. That's what it's accessing. And the font size is going to be, let's say, 80. We'll close off those brackets. So we should get a little message on the screen that's saying that our game is over. Now beneath that, I want to put in our final score. So I'm going to copy and paste this, um, what I just did. So Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. Now instead of saying game over, we are going to say the score with a colon and a space. And then after that um, quotation mark, we're going to put plus str and then score in brackets. Okay, so it takes our score that we've been keeping track of, converts it to a string, and we'll display it in this game over message. Now the center x is going to remain at 380 here, and the center y we're going to change from 150, let's double it to 300, so it moves further down the page, our score text. I'm going to change the color from red to white. Uh, font name is going to stay the same, and font size, drop it from 60 down, uh, sorry, from 80 down to 60. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, so what we need to do now after this, so if the game is over, we finished it, we get the game over message and we get our final score printed on the screen. Down after that you need to write else and put a colon just to say what else happens if our game is not over. So that's when we draw all our elements, including the score on the screen and make the obstacles come out. Um, that's a fair bit of code, so let's give it a crack and see if that's working. Oh, no, there we go, we've got... Oh yeah, after the else statement we need to highlight everything and press tab just to indent it. Forgot about that. OK, 
Okay, it's working at the moment here. So all I'm really looking for is I can jump over the spikes and get a point and then get hit by the spikes. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we've got a bit of an issue here. You would have heard that sound continually playing. Okay, so that's what we need to fix up. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go back up the top here where we create the game variables. And I'm going to make um, a new one called, we'll call it death sound and set it to false. Um, now back down where we play that sound, actually, we're going to be updating this variable called death sound inside this update function. So let's make it global first of all. So let's add death sound to the global variable list. And then we're going to head down, 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 down to here. This is where we play that game over sound. I still want it to play, but we're going to have to add a little if statement around it. So if our death sound is equal to false, then we're going to play it, and then we're going to make death sound equal to true. That's all we need to do. So basically when the zombie collides uh, with the spikes, we check to see if we've already played the death sound at all. If we haven't, then we're going to play it once, and then we change that death sound to true, which should stop that sound from playing, because it's only going to play if our death sound is set to false. Okay, we'll quickly test that again to see what happens when we get hit by the spikes. So I won't jump over any. It still plays the death sound. And it stops after that, so that looks good. Okay, so have a look at this now. There's a bit of an error here. It says game over, and I had our score is zero, but I'm pressing the up arrow and something's still happening behind the scenes. Things are still moving, okay? So there must be a ghost still moving across the screen because I can get five points at a time. And I think the spikes must be still coming across the screen because that goes up by one every so often like that. So we've got a bit of a glitch in our hands here. We need to try and prevent that score from going up once our game is over. And the way we do that is we create an if statement. Okay, so where's the top of our spikes? Okay, in this section here. All right, the only time I want the spikes to be added to the obstacles list is if game over equals false. So I'm going to put in an if statement here saying if game over equals equals false and put a colon. Remember we put two equal signs when we're just checking on something or testing something out. So if our game over equals false, it means we're still playing our game then we can put some spikes into the obstacles list to make them appear on the screen. That's all good. But if our game is set to true, then these two lines of code will not run. So that means no more spikes are going to be added to the obstacles list, which means no more spikes will be added into our game. Um, we also want to put in another if statement. Um, I was thinking of it just before. Yeah, it was with the ghost. That's right. So the ghost was still, was still flying across the screen, I realized, because I was collecting five points every so often when I pressed the up arrow. So we only want our ghost to move across the screen, um, which is this one here, actually, if the game over is set to false. So if game over is equal to false, then we will move our ghost across the screen. Um, I think that's all we need to do for that. Let's give it a test run now. I don't think we'll have any issues. We'll test the game fully. So we know the background works good. We can jump over the spikes to get one point. Let's wait for a ghost to come onto the screen to make sure we can collect them and get five points. Yep, so that's all good. Now when I hit the spikes, let's keep an eye on this score. We just want to make sure it doesn't change now. So I'm not touching anything and it's staying the same. I'm going to start pressing the up arrow just to try and collect something that's potentially moving in the background there, but it's definitely not going up. So those two little if statements definitely work there. So they prevent the ghost from flying back on the screen and they prevent those spikes from coming back onto the screen as well. So our score should not change. And I think that will do us. We have a finished game on our hands. So. It's up to you now 
how you extend this game. If you want to add some more obstacles in besides the spikes, by all means go for it. Maybe you could add some different collectibles rather than just the ghost. We could start collecting something else. You could change the speeds up a little bit. Um, as I said, options are endless. Actually, before I do go, we might put in some background music. Okay, it's an easy one. It's only one line of code. I usually stick it up the top here after I've put in the game screen dimensions. Um, what we've got in our account here, we haven't done this before, we've got music. And in the music folder, I've got some sound called music. So all we need to do is write music, dot play, and then in brackets and quotation marks, write the name of the file. So it was called music. And what that will do is um, put in a comment, play background music on repeat. Okay, so once it plays through once, it will just loop back around and keep playing all over again. So let's have another test run. Alright, can hear our music. That's sounding pretty good. I think I might actually get that music to stop when our game um, ends. It probably sounds a bit funny that it's still playing on the game over screen. So you can change that probably in a number of spots. I'm going to do it down the bottom here where it says if the game is over. And I'll just write music.stop. And open and close some brackets. And that should stop our music once we hit the spikes. Yeah, that's a bit better. I think sound a little bit weird with the music still um, playing and the game was over. Alright, so that is our um, game done and dusted. So save her up um, and I'll catch you in a future tu tutorial.